I am happy to be here today. And I'm happy to see new faces. Honor to the Lord. Amen. Honor to Jesus Christ. Our services are different, right? And I'm thankful for it because God gave us this. this we are about to. We are learning, and we we learn to listen to the Spirit of God, and the movement to recognize and to see the Spirit of the Lord. We learn to listen to the voice of God and to be obedient. We don't want to say this is the plan, simply say this is the plan and this is how we have to follow. No, we want to see what the Lord wants to do. God gave us we are a center for ministries because God gave us um, the mission to to do the fivefold ministry and to revive them here in this nation. It's not an easy way because we are a little church, but we are working on it. So that out of this nation, uh, evangelists, pastors, teachers, uh, and so on can be set free and that go through the nations and to bring this new reformation because there has to be a new reformation because before Jesus comes back I observe the development of this nation and of the churches in this nation and I thought it cannot be like this any longer you can see the revival in South America. You, you hear about Yon Kishur in, in South Korea. You listen um, about um, revival in Nigeria, Congo. And you can see that God is working and moving so mightily in Nigeria. And he is, um, he is bringing up apostles and prophets. They are so mighty fallen God. And we, we said we don't want to be just observers. We want to be participants, we want to be doers of the word. The, the Spirit of God is the one who, who works in Nigeria and also is able to do here signs and wonders in this nation. That's why at the beginning it costs a lot. You will see the participants in the revival, revival they, have to, they had to pay a lot. The price, the price is very high for the revival. I speak like this because I was in South, South France often, and I also greet them. Claude Verges and his son Jan, they, they receive us always, and they said, I have to receive the reward of the prophet, so that's why I received the, law, the prophet. So she opens uh, the door and she, she takes care for everything, my house is your house, and she prepared everything. Every, <laughs> hallelujah. Every year she stands in front of the door and waits that, she, that we come. And we received um, five um, pastors there. We had a wonderful time. I was I, I was allowed to pray for a 65-year-old uh, pastor. He was a pastor for almost 35 years. He was in a school of a big apostle in France. Pierre Ruchel, he, um, he equipped um, prophets and apostles, and this man was in the school of Pierre Ruchel. If you hear about this, it's someone who truly was equipped. And this man told me, um, he, uh, he founded a church 35 years ago, about about 35 years ago, and he he realized that it's a time that the church um, moves prophetically and to conquer the grounds of the nation. And he calls other other pastors and uh, um, showed them this vision. And um, he wanted to bring women into their ministries and as prophetess or pastors under his guidance, but he was so attacked. They attacked him that at one point he was very tired and said, 
I have to close this church. And then he said, it was not the way of God, but he had no one who could advise him or tell him or could endure with him in the church. He did not know about the spiritual warfare. Why? I, from the five pastors that came to pray with me, those five pastors, they all closed their churches. And I looked, why did they do this? And I could see that God did something wonderful in there. There was one woman, and we started speaking in tongues. And the woman started speaking in tongues, and the Holy Spirit told me, this is not the Spirit of God. And sometimes, yes, well, the man of God, they are experienced ones, they know what they do, but you have to always depend on the Holy Spirit alone. The Holy Spirit told me, this, um, this woman is infiltrating the pastors. So I stood up and started praying for her, and she falls down from the, from the coach, and she, moves on, and she moves on the ground like a snake, starts screaming, and the man is starting speaking in her. She has left me. I was her husband, and I decided she will have no peace. She will never marry again. And I said, who are you? I said, I, I am her um, past husband. And I told him, you, she gave her life to Jesus. You are not allowed to do so. I'm still controlling her life. Look at me. She wants to marry. Everyone who is coming um, um, is leaving. I blocked the marriage in her life. And when this spirit went out, she started speaking in the same same spirit and then I, I I realized there's another spirit and it's marine spirit so we fought against this and cast it out and then I asked the pastors do you want to build churches he said yes that's why we are here so then you are not allowed to do the same mistakes as in the past you're not allowed to do the same mistakes in the past I'm young in ministry, but in this little time that I already experienced, every time when a, a church is grounded, uh, established, there are sons and daughters of God and also sons and daughters of Satan. Satan is mixing and infiltrating everywhere he, where he finds a revival. The, the revival of Toronto was infiltrated. The revival, the movement of the vineyard, look at this. You will see in the vineyard church, there is so, so much, so much snake movement. And every time, where God wants to start, either in your life or in church, Satan always tries to infiltrate. You could see it in Hiob, chapter 1. Satan, the, 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 womb, um, the children of God, they gathered, the sons of God gathered, and Satan came too in Hiob. And, um, and in South France, I could see there are no churches that are not walking in the way of um, alliances with other churches that are not truly Christians. They meet with Catholic and evangel evangelist, evangel evangelic priests. And I asked God, why is it like this, that every church is connecting with such priests and pastors and movements, Maria, adoration? And the answer was, yes, your Pentecost people, you are without love. God tells, tells us to love. They are also our brethren. We shall love them. I said, yes, I love them. But if they don't see Jesus as the only way, I cannot meet with them and gather with them. Even if they have Jesus as way and they add Maria or they add uh, adoration of angels, no. These are demonic movements and I want to be part of it. We Christians at the end, end of times, we are so careless, we became humanistic. Because someone is speaking about Jesus, we can connect with them. So Jesus says, no. 
We have to prove every spirit to see if they are from God. And the mistake they these pastors made, everyone who Jesus has is love, lovely and is from God, and they opened up themselves and they allowed a lot in the church or all. So if someone comes into church, he, he repented and converted, he started singing in, um, on the stage. And the one church, uh, there was one woman in, um, on stage, she was in the worship team, and I told her, you are a fortune teller. You have never stopped reading cards. And uh, she said, yes, I still do it. She, she said it. She admitted it, even in front of her pastor. And, and then I said, and you sing in the, on the stage? And the worship team, I could see that someone who is um, playing keyboard is is living unmarried with a with a with a with a man, and is in the worship team. I could see someone who is leading the tr the service um, is unmarried and lives with a woman, but still leads the service. And what do we say? Everyone has, it's their own business. But believe me, the sin is like a, is like a plague. Every, every sin that you close your eyes, um, then this will come into your house. So I have to be your watchman. If I see something in your life that is not pleasing to God, I have to speak to you. If you don't, um, if you don't want to work on it, if you still continue it, then I have to come with two or three brothers, and then if you continue, then I have to speak in public in ch in church, and then if you still um, resist in turning your ways, then you are not a Christian because then you have no part in Christ, Christ Christ, because we cannot say we we serve God and then we serve the world or live like the world and live. Um, with the works of Satan in us. We say every, every tree that God has not planted has to be cast out. So that's why when we see in Jeremiah uh, chapter 1, he says, So it's Jeremiah 1, um, verse 10. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Before I build and plant, what am I doing? I have to destroy and throw down. Before I build and plant, what I have to do? To root out, to pull down. Before I build a marriage, what am I doing? I root out every old, old roots. Before man and woman go into marriage, if they're both if they both, if both um, experience rejection, for example, it just added, it just adds. If you have children, and if your children will receive this and so on. So the, the task of the church is if people come with bitterness or hurt or unforgiveness or rejection, that the church through the Holy Spirit has to bring healing and deliverance. Demons have to be cast out. This is one of the biggest mistakes. We, don't, we don't cast demons out. Mistake of the church. We thought when you repent and everything has gone. No, the repentance starts in your spirit, but also your soul has to repent. And the repentance of your soul starts the more you de dive into the Word of God. That's why you speak about the cleaning, cleansing through the Word of God. It's a process. So you come as a prideful person into church. Have you ever seen a person that has been prideful, repenting, and the next day is without pride? No. Or the same with a lazy person? No. It's a process. The more you dive into the Word of God, the more you will be changed.
You have to lay down pride. I'm too lazy to read the Bible. I'm too careless. I'm too sad. I'm too emotional. Emotional people cannot serve the Lord because he looks for people who serve him in spirit and in truth and not in emotions. Every time you are in the spirit, your spirit connects with the spirit of God and your spirit receives the tasks and the missions of God and the way of God and your spirit gives it to your soul and your soul has to learn to subordinate. Because David says, my soul, um, believe in the word of God. You have to speak to your soul. You have to fill your soul with the word of God. That's why we say, this, the prayer is for the spirit. The word is for the soul. The, the um, soul needs daily nutrition, has to dive into the word every day because food is bathing. The emotions will be cleaned. The feelings will be cleaned. Your thoughts will be renewed. According to Romans 12, 1, the renewance of your thoughts comes by reading the Word and through the Word of God. But all demons that came from generations, there are generational spirits, and you call them familiar spirits. They come from one generation to the next generation, and if God is not stopping this and healing um, people and members in your family to cast out this, uh, cast out these spirits, the same way you re you have been rejected, then also your children will be rejected because it's the familiar spirit. The same way, the same way as uh, occultism or fortune teller was done in your family, this this spirits in the family. And they go through. They come. They come. Go to generations from from generation to generation. Sorry. So repentance is not sufficient only because Jesus said, "Cast out demons," and you cast out demons um, in the lives of Christians and not not non Christians. Newborn Christian, they have to go through. Um, deliverance and healing and building up so they can be stable in their faith. If demons have not been cast out in your life, you will be still unstable, you will be lawful, you will be stubborn, you will be rebellious. Because demons, they try to bring you to rebel or to not ordinate. They tempt you to live in sin. They lie to you. You're always uh, under attack of bad thoughts because demons, they try to bring you out of the way of God. Demons hinder that and block that you will marry or that you will be financial um, blessed. Why? So that you start uh, doubting God in your life. That's their task. Demons don't kill, but they kill your spiritual life. That's the aim. And they have so much time, they work for years. Demons can be in your life, and they work for 10, 20 years until you give up. No, I don't go to any church any longer. I don't want to be connected to Christians. Other spirits, um, um, they, their task is that when you enter a church, you will be hurt and hurt again. If you don't see that something is in you that brings other people to hurt and reject me, you will go from church to church until you will stay at home and no longer pray and no longer read the Bible. It's where we missed. We thought um, church as we gathering, we gather together some words. No, church means. We meet and we look deep into your life. We have to look deep into your life where Satan has rights, where demons are playing with your life. And our task is to look deep why there are also fights between you and your wife, where, which spirit stands in between. And then we cast them out and we bless the family and we build the family again. That's why uh, the Bible says in Acts 1, you will receive a spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit, 
why the spirit not to gather just no the power to to overcome satan like jesus did we have to overcome satan like jesus did the same way as jesus went to the cross we have to go to the cross you have to go to the cross this gospel yeah, we don't have to do anything god jesus did all it's a demonic it's a demonic teaching it's a demonic gospel because the bible says the one who follows me has to reject himself and, and has to carry the cross. So why do you have to t carry the cross? It's because you have you have to die. You have to die in Jesus Christ, in your pride, in your arrogance, in your laziness, in your mocking, in your evil speaking, in all things. Everything has to die in you that Jesus Christ can live in you. Because if not, not all is dying in you, every every time Jesus wants to move, he is he is blocked. He will be blocked by your evil thoughts. Jesus wants to wants to move um, freely, and he he needs someone who is dead in everything, in your own, in my, in your me, mine. You are dead in these in these areas. Dead. Because me, my, mine has to die so that Jesus Christ alone can be visible in you. That Jesus Christ can be seen in your language, in your behavior, and the way when your, when your brother sees you, they see Jesus Christ. If you if you serve Jesus, Jesus Christ serves through you. You receive a power and it's the Holy Spirit. It's the it's a power of broke breakthrough and of victory and of revival. It's a spirit of revival. It's a spirit of, of, of to cast out demons. It's a spirit without this power, uh, the church cannot stand. When this power comes into you, you will manifest the fruits of the Spirit. If this power comes into you, then you manifest the gifts of the Spirit. If this uh, power comes into you, you will m manifest the ministry of the Spirit. Without this power, there are no ministries and no fruit. You will serve God, but with your own force and power. Dear brothers and sisters, we open our Bible in Matthew 24, Matthew 24, verse 4. What does the Bible say? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And will deceive many. If you go through the Bible, I love this scripture because it's a prophetic text that is um, connected to the revelation. Because in Matthew 24, Jesus gives us the chronological movement before um, the rapture and during the rapture and after the rapture. So if you study Matthew 24, you have to um, part it in three parts. It's um, before rapture, during rapture, and after rapture. What will happen? It's a wonderful text, and I encourage you to read it. So if you read Matthew 24, verse 2 to 14, we see, we see the time before the rapture. So 4 to 14 is connected to a Revelation 6. It's wonderful. It's not our topic today, but today you can study this. If you um, study time before, during, and after, and you want to have more knowledge and more revelation about it, study Matthew 24. But um, the verse 4 and 5 tells us that there is a um, tempting or deceiving spirit that will come to the earth, 
And remember, we said the um, spirit of the Antichrist is, is already on the earth, but he is not allowed to show. For some months ago, we said because the, the spirit of Antichrist is on the earth, he infiltrated the churches. The spirit of Antichrist uh, infiltrated the churches. And we gave you a bullet points how to recognize that I am under the influence of the Antichrist. So when we said, if you remember, if you see that uh, it's a fight for me to read the Bible, I, I'm not able to read it for five or ten minutes. I either am tired or start, um, start sleeping or I'm distracted, then I'm in the influence under the wind of the Antichrist. And also the second point, if there are um, things in church are tolerated, everyone can do what they want, a homosexual can serve, if there is like a ne negligence and you tolerate it and the Antichrist has already infiltrated the church. We can even give more examples. Why am I saying that the spirit of Antichrist is already there? The same way as the Holy Spirit is on earth and the churches to prepare the people to the return of Jesus Christ, the same way the Antichrist is preparing people in churches and also outside churches so that when the Antichrist is coming, everyone receives him. We, we will receive him if we are not equipped in the word. We will equip, we will receive him even though recognizing him that he is false if we are not equipped in prayer and in word. That's why the church has to be equipped in, to, to recognize the spirit of the Antichrist, to see his wind, to see his movement in the church. If he is in the church or in your house or in your life, he takes away everything, all substance that shows that you are a true God, children of God. He robs you the the power that shows the spirit, uh, the the power that follows those who follow Jesus Christ in the name in His name. They it, he robs you from it. And the one thing I said to God, Lord, I don't want to serve you without Your power. Better I sit without. Uh, not serving the Lord without without power, because if the spirit if the spirit is in you, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You're filled with power. Jesus himself, Jesus himself, before he entered ministry, he was filled with power. He was he he walked in the power of the Holy Spirit, and all he said was filled with the Holy Spirit. All that he did was filled with the Holy Spirit. Everyone who believes in me will do the same things as I did, and even more, and greater things. That's what the, the church has received as an inheritance. We, has, we have, we are allowed, and we could do all that Jesus Christ did, and even more. God is good, amen? The Bible says, warns us, of um, false teaching and tells us to be cautious. Uh, Jesus was confronted with Pharisees and Sadducees who um, uh, who followed him not to receive his teaching but to um, attack or critic, 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 criticize him. The Pharisees and Sadducees were people who were walking with a certain kind of teaching. They were um, equipped in, um, in the mosaic 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 teaching so the laws of Moses they were equipped to to uh, teach the mosaic um, law what was the difference between the Pharisees, Pharisees and the disciples of Jesus what was the difference the difference was both taught according to Moses but one but one side taught in the spirit, and the other side bought, uh, taught in law. Do we agree? Yes. So the Pharisees have the same word as the Sabbath of Jesus Christ brought, because Jesus himself was teaching the Torah. But the difference was what Jesus or his disciples did brought was in freedom, because God says, 
God is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. But the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they were lawful people. And we said to, to um, spread the word of God without the spirit of God leads you to law, to lawless, to law. And to move in the spirit, um, to sp in the spirit without the word of God leads you to um, esoteric mysticism. mysticism. So we have a lot of people that want to move in the gifts, and they will be brought in visions to Kaiserslautern or some other places. I'm, I'm not against it, but that if me as a preacher, God brought me from my bed to, to Poland, and I evangelized, and I came back, and I speak like this, I have to have the biblical foundations and also lay them in the church. Why? Because I received 10, 15, and they have um, here in this place, and they, they listen to the same teaching. God told me I have to go in the spirit there and there. And, this, and these people, they became depressed, and they almost um, manifested all the same demons. And I told them, you are walking as Shal. You are not delivered yet. You have there's a mixture in your life, and I could see a lot of people who came. They were uh, uh, past esoteric people, or Reiki uh, leaders, who were moving in the occult, and they came to church, and they persecuted, uh, followed this man of God, and they started serving without being delivered. And this is what happened. This is what is leading people to be led by demonic teachings, so that people start thinking Satan will always give you the impression you serve the Lord, you serve the Lord. He will not take everything of, uh, back. He will allow us so that we praise and that we. But at, at one point, he will rob something from us if we are not cautious. If you're not cautious, All, every time Jesus was walking or moving, the Pharisees came to confront um, people with fear so that they will not receive the teaching of Jesus Christ. They came to stop the teaching of Jesus Christ and to mock, and to, to mock Jesus Christ. They came to accuse Jesus Christ. And to stop um, the Pharisees and the Pharisees and the Sadducees had control over the people. That's why Nicodemus he came at night to meet with Jesus. Why at night? Why not a day uh, during the day? A teacher, a priest. He is hiding to meet with Jesus because he knew if if he if someone sees him, he will be um, cast out of the church of the synagogue. He will no longer serve there. But at one point, he said, "I can no longer hide." And one one he's one who took Jesus from the cross and laid him into the grave. Nicodemus, Hallelujah. So the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they, they did, um, they worked on that everything that Jesus was doing could not spread. And Jesus told them, you have the devil as a parent, as a father, and what your father wants and desires, you want to do it. He was a, a killer, a murderer from the beginning. He doesn't stand in the truth because the truth is not in him. And if he speaks a lie, he speaks out of himself. If Satan speaks the lie, so the question is, how does Satan speak the lie today in the world and in the church? How does he do it? We said, the world is a place 
wo Geister where spirits nicht einfach haben sich zu bewegen cannot just simply move Geister spirits um to be efficient und erfolgreich in die and Welt successful in the world they need bodies Geister brauchen Körper spirits need bodies Amen Amen Gott ist Geist God is Spirit, and so that God can move um, eff efficiently, He needs your body and my body. So without our bodies, um, he, he, God or Satan cannot reach the people. Without human beings, human beings, it will be difficult for God to spread the gospel. So that's why He needs my brother or my sister. But the problem is, so that my that God can use my sister efficiently. He has to work on her heart, on her mind, on her emotions, on her feelings. So that when God cries, we don't laugh. And if he laughs, we don't cry. So when God wants to move on the, to the right, we move to the right. When God wants to warn, we, we warn. If God wants to encourage, we encourage. If God wants to strengthen, we strengthen. God, that means God takes the control in us if we allow him to do so. He never, he never does it without our allowance. But Satan wants to do the same. He wants to have the control over the world. And we know that when Jesus Christ was tested by Satan, Satan took him to, um, and showed him all the riches of the world and said, if you bow down before me and you adore me, I will give you all kingdoms and their glory. Because it has been given to me, who gave it to Satan and his glory? It was Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, they had the task to reign, to build, to spread out. They received all from God. What did they do? They gave their firstborn rights to Satan. And they gave their reign to, they had the reign over the earth. They shall, shall multiply. They shall have the control over everything. They shall reign over animals, but, but Satan knew to get this reign, I have to lead them to sin, to rebel against God. The moment Adam and Eve de rebelled, they lost their dom dominion. And Satan started to reign over the humankind. But Satan knew to have constantly the reign over the humans, he has to build things, that systems that that people are distracted from God, that they don't think of God. So he, he brings sins, sexual sins, perversion, lies, um, TV. And TV is one of the greatest uh, works of Satan, the tools of Satan, also cinema and music industry. Because music, music make us very emotional and soulish. He brings the cinema. He, he builds the stars, they're like idols. They bring cars, oh my car, I cannot live without my car. Mine, 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 mine. Satan is, is, uh, is working on the ego of the human being. Mine, mine, it's me, it belongs to me. At the, in the past, your house was my house, in the time of Peter. If I wanted to sleep in Hockenheim, I I I uh, um, bell, I ring the bell. What is in the fridge? There is no mine, me. What kind of pizza? Who is this pizza? Who does this pizza belong to? I'm eating the pizza. I love Peter and John. Oh, your. Oh no, it's my. This is how it was. Nothing belonged to you alone. But how is the world today? It's my car. Only the husband and the wife you wanted allowed to, to, to share. You can say that's mine. You shall not share. It's the only point. Satan brought a lot of uh, sins into the world to control the humans. And he knew it does not, it is not sufficient. 
And that's what the thoughts of Jeroboam was. What did Jeroboam do? In Samaria, he bought, uh, he built uh, altars, golden altars. If and he thought, if I build altars, golden altars. Um, um, then they don't go to uh, Jerusalem to pray to God. So what does Satan do? He builds altars of Hinduism, Islam, Reiki, esoteric, Freemasons. He gives the human kind um, different movements because he know, knows through this um, movement, Satanism, witchcraft, all this with occultism will, will bring people to the imagination, deception that they will serve the Lord. But then he goes one step further, Satan. The Pentecost will recognize that Hinduism, Satanism, Occultism, Freemasons, Mormon, Je uh, Witness of Jehovah, they are coming from me. So what is he doing? He gathers his demons, the lords of the, the heavenly realms, it's the highest hierarchy of the demons. The hierarchy of Satan is separated and fall. What are the... Uh, the little... The forces. So it's, it stands in Ephesians 4. Ephesians 6. Starting from 10. What does the Bible say? Denn unser Kampf richtet sich nicht gegen Fleisch und Blut, sondern gegen die Herrschaften, die Herrschaften gegen die Gewalten, so gegen for we do not in 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So I, re I repeat, against principalities, Principalities. That's the last level. That's the, the powers is one step um, higher in the hierarchy than the third level. Rulers of darkness of this age. They are polluting this this um, age. They are in the fourth element elements in the marine. They control the air, the seas, the earth, the underground, and they control the mountains and the forests. There are spirits, there are marine spirits, and for example, Leviathan, or the serene spirit, or the crocodile, or the sea monster. These are the marine spirits, and they have control over sexuality, sexual, or homosexuality, or perversion. They are under the control. Music. They control the uh, discotheque, a music, or cinema. These are the spiritual marine spirits. They are also controlling the fashion. For example, different. Um, yeah. Dolce Gabbana, and so on. Most of them, they are in wrong direction. In Africa, they say they have double SIM card. They control. And the highest hierarchy, the fourth level, are the, the spiritual hosts of wickedness and the heavenly places. They are in heavenly realms. And these are those who are in the in the circle of Satan. They are the ministers of Satan. If they gather together, they decide who um, what is going on on the earth. Satan, you know, we built Islam. We brought everything, but there are these followers of Jesus Christ, and we hate them. We hate those followers. They disturb us, and they break through all the time. If we pray, we have to come through the second heaven to the third heaven, 
so that our our because our prayers and fire they cannot hold us. We are in fire. And if Satan wants to hold you back, and the Bible says the Lord makes out of us flames of fire. So you are fire flame, and every time Satan sees that your altar is uh, burning, that there's uh, your altar is burning, he tries to do everything to relinquish your altar. Never allow the enemy to relinquish your fire. Bring wood all the time. Wood is the word of God, proclamation of the word of God, declaration of the word of God. If you stand up and you wake up and you proclaim and you declare the word of God over your life, over your children, over your wife, over disease, is this over sick people, over fall, fallen people. It's wood on the altar, and this wood uh, allows your fire to burn all the time. And if your fire burns, your body is laid on the altar like a sacrifice, and there's perfume to God, and it brings blessings to your house. And this kind of Christians, Satan hates you. He hates Christians who are ready to lose everything for God. He hates Christians who are ready to die. He hates Christians who give everything for Jesus. Whatever you want to do, I'm ready. He hates Christians. I hate sin. I don't want to do anything to do with sin. I don't want to, don't be identified with sin. He hates such Christians. He hates churches who are strong in faith, who are strong in spirit, who are strong in the world. He hates such churches who are always burning fire. He hates, he hates uh, families when uh, woman and w uh, wife and husband give each other hands and they pray together. He hates such marriages and couples. He hates your marriage. He hates women who pray for their um, who pray for their husbands. He hates women who go onto their knees and pray for them. And he said, is he worthy? Why do you why do you sacrifice your life for such a man? Is this man worthy? Yes, he is worthy. He is my boss. He is my, my head. And I am his glory. And if I light, and, light, and if I'm light and my God my, my my husband also is in light. Me and my husband, we were born to destroy the works of Satan and to break through and to influence this this nation and this generation. This shall be your... This is our calling, to show the world he is, our, he is the Lord of Lords and to bring the word of God and to, to, co to spread the word with in spirit and in truth. What does... Satan do, he infiltrates the, the church. He knows through infiltration, he can come among the um, among Christians, Pentecost Christians, and he did so. He succeeded, and he started um, to. Um, and to, to that the fire will stop and he did it over years and we, we cannot allow this any longer we cannot look at this we cannot say I don't care any longer I am saved I'm not saved to go into heaven first I am saved to have a, um, an intimacy with God and a close connection to the Lord and to build his kingdom and to be a partner of God and to, to speak with God and he wants to have an intimate relationship with me and to, to show and to share his burdens he wants to have he wants to ha that I am similar that I'm in his image and many people come to church uh, out of fear to go to the hell be ashamed be ashamed if you go to church because of fear no I come to the church because I recognize and acknowledge that no, no longer I live but Jesus Christ lives in me 
Father, my soul, my body, my spirit, they belong to you. Do out of me what is pleasing to you, God. If it's about going out, whatever you expect me to do, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. I'm not afraid to go into prison any longer. Or if it's about to, to, to stand behind the name of Jesus Christ, we shall be ready to do all things. Do you think Peter was in prison? And you are so you are more loved than Peter to not go into prison? Do you think God loves you more than Stephanus who was um, killed by stones because of the gospel? And you are also the same worthy. But he allowed it with Stephanus and he cannot allow it with every one of us. He can allow it with every one of us. So stop living in fear. Stop living in fear of people. Trust the Lord in all your ways that the Lord is able to protect you from all works of Satan. The strategy of Satan among the Pentecost people He changed the, the strategy. He knew religions and all those things, occultism, Reiki, those things, they know about it. So they, um, he developed a different strategy. One of the first strategies is to bring false revival everywhere. False revival. For example, you speak about Toronto revival. Who has heard about it? Who, how did it end? A lot of separation first. And is God the God of separation? So there's a false demonic movement like anointing of laughter. It's a demon. Who was under the laughter? Who was under the anointing of laughter? We have to pray for you. So during, during the service, uh, people are laying hands on each other and then they start to laugh and then are making noises like animals. This is how it was with this Toronto revival. Man of God went from everywhere globally to this place and to experience this. I know about a pastor and we work together. And all the pastors we they they walked with they went down. So a, a man of God brought this brought this into the church and his son killed himself. Separations and divorces all of a sudden, 20, 30 divorces. It was the seed of the snake among the Toronto anointing. Maybe at the beginning it was the way of God, but Satan used this so and switched it. Why? Because of carelessness. And I could see that in Europe, people want to serve, but they are not ready to, to pay the price. So that's why you see people today. And then all of a sudden the car breaks down. Oh no, I cannot do this because of that and that and that. And I need and I need and then it's just about me, it's about me, it's about me. It's about me healing, healing, I need this and I need that. No, God does not need to heal. God does not want, have to give you what you want. And I say, Lord, give me all what I, you, what is pleasing to you, not what is, give, what is pleasing to me. Never give me something that pleases me, but doesn't ple please you. You are the first in my life. And Lord, take everything from me that is pleasing to me and give me all that you want to give me. Take all that you don't want to give me, Lord. These are my prayers. Look how Christians live today. Say, pray, pray, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. 
There have to be times when you come here to church and you close the door and you go onto your knees and you start praying, starting from six, and then it's twenty and it's um, twelve hours later. You're like Yosua. You're coming to the presence of the Lord. He was in the presence of the Lord for days and weeks, even though God told um, Moses no one is allowed to enter the tent. No, Yosua was searching him because the heart was pleasing to God. How is your heart? There, there's, there, there's time, there are times when I show and I pray for 2, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. and then I go to work. Tiredness often here in the mind. But if you want to be a prayer warrior, don't listen to your mind but your heart. We often hear, listen to our minds and not our heart. The spirit. Listen to the spirit, not not your flesh, not your mind, not your own opinion. Because in the presence of the Lord, my my opinion has to die, and the opinion of God has to live. It's not about my about my meaning. No, what is the meaning of God? Uh, what is the opinion of God? Sorry, this is the center of God. False revival. Vineyard movement. It is one movement that I have to speak about. Or Augsburg um, prayer um, prayer place Augsburg. You, you can also uh, have experience with voodoo priests. I hear Pentecost people say, "I go to Augsburg, Augsburg." You have to lo lose yourself from it. It's a mixture. It's a. It's a. Mm, counterfeit. It's an infiltration in the movement of this na of God in this nation. If you don't have open eyes to see this and to recognize this, even if you, even if you experience miracles, please separate yourself from this. I'm ready to say to Johannes Hartel, you are an infiltration of the of the true Church of Jesus Christ. You are an agent. You are you are a wolf among the sheep of God. They knew. The same happens in Africa. The Catholics saw the Pentecost are in the, in the in movement, and what did they do? A priest starts to have Pentecostal movement, speaking in tongues and signs and wonders. But all who looked at this in a spiritual way. Uh, um, they have one false movement, and jo um, Johannes Hartl is one of them. Come, don't come here and say Johannes Hartl has prayed for me. Please lose yourself and separate you from it. Even if you have received miracles, Satan can also do miracles. People give reasons, and they don't have foundations. And this is one break of revival in this nation. Why? Because Pentecost go from everywhere and go there. Evangelical also there. It's a counterfeit. It's a counterfeit. And I have to warn this nation because God told me so. It's a counterfeit. You have the Holy Spirit and you have more than the um, Augsburg. If you go into your room and you have an altar of prayer, God remembers you. You don't have to go there. Dear brothers and sisters, someone tells me he is from God and he still serves Satan. Separate from this person. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot adore uh, Jesus Christ and then Maria still has, is the way to God. She's a demon. It's a demon. Me and my ministry, I had to deliver people from the spirit of Maria and the false Eucharistry, the false Jesus. And a Catholic, there are four Jesuses. The first Jesus who comes through Eastern, Jesus who is, a, who is still a baby in Christmas, who cannot touch our sins. He is not allowed to warn us. We tell him where to go to. And then there is another Christ who is on the cross. And the fourth Jesus is the one who has been resurrected. But Maria stands above him because Maria is also, went also to heaven. 
which Maria went to heaven. Which Maria? I only know about three people who have been resurrected. Henoch, Elia, and Jesus. Maria is waiting the same as we do. We waiting for the returning in the revival, uh, returning rapture. Maria is still waiting. Satan brought a counterfeit in this nation. He is copying the true spiritual movement. He awakes false teachings and prophets that are difficult to see if we don't have the foundations of the world, we don't see and understand the counterfeits. So what is he doing again? He brings um, four spiritual gifts. You know about the story about Acts 6, 16, where this woman was uh, walking with the uh, spirit of Python, and she prophesied. But the source of this prophecy was um, a deceiving one. That's why in John 4, 1 John 4, we, sh we shall have to test all spirits. You have to test my ministry. You have to test my ministry. You have to test my movement. You have to test the fruit of my life. You have to test all before you believe in my ministry. And how do you prove? How do you test? If you go onto your knees and say, Lord, this man who stands in, in front of in front of us, who is he? Is he? Does he speak about you or does he speak about false idols? Tell me. God who answers prayers will show you who is standing here. Don't believe every spirit, but test the spirits. He awakes false teaching, and he also brings false adoration. A lot of false adoration. Who knows about his song in the past? It was in the beginning, it was filled with the Holy Spirit, but today it's trash. They are Freemason movement infiltrated, but who, who, know, who knows about evaluation worship? Who's the leader of it? The, the founder? Stephen Furtick. Have you listened to him? He always makes this sign. He, he was T.D. Jake's friend. What does this sign mean? I don't hear you. I don't hear you. It's a devil. This is how Stephen Furtick does. I have the image. I can send it to you. Not just one or two times. These are infiltrations in the movement, the development of the church. I listened to a conversation on TV and T.D. Jakes was uh, questioned or interviewed about homosexuality. It was demonic what he gave as, as an answer. I think if David Wilkerson as, as, um, was still alive, would cry. And we said, yeah, T.D. Jakes, T.D. Jakes, Joyce Meyer, yes. These are these are counterfeits in the in the church of the body of Christ, and we don't see it. They um, new age came into the church. Positive thinking came into the church. It's the false teaching, the demonic teaching, and they are active in the churches in the in the body of Christ. And it's your task to understand and to see them. And the church and said to Peter, John, be aware and pray so that you won't don't fall into temptations. Without being careful, we won't make it. Who knows Keith Franklin? A wonderful singer in the past, but now he says, I'm homose homosexual. And he organizes Christian's gospel concert, and thousands go there in a tent and they, they dance and rejoice. But it's the 
It's demonic teaching. So the demonic teaching that is trying to um, rob us from the true identity of they do the same as the Pharisees in the past. Everything that tries to bring us from the true way from of Jesus without understanding and seeing and knowing it, everything to be careless and to have excuses after excuses and justification and justification. I say the, play, the church is no place of democracy. There's no democracy here. It's a theocracy. God says where to go to and we move in this direction. He doesn't do it as a dictator. He shows us the way because if we go this way, we are safe. We are secure. That's why it is said the name of Jesus is a strong tower and the righteous runs to it and is secure. God shows me an image how the world looks like. Who was in the jungle? In the night. I was in the jungle in the night. But I mean true jungle. Where you have serpents and monkeys. I saw monkeys. Well, I was not alone. I was with experienced warriors. We were in a village where elephants where elephants could be seen like 10 kilometers since they were very close to the village. And we even sent spe special warriors so that they can go away because 10 kilometers for elephants is nothing. And the wor world is like a dark forest and this dark forest has no light. And this dark forest has so so cruel wild animals, all kinds of wild animals, and only one can show you the way you, where you won't go from, where you are not um, fall down or not are attacked by wild animals, because the jungle has all kinds of tra traps, and the Holy Spirit is the one who comes with the light. And this light, all wild animals cannot see this light. Only, only you alone, the Holy Spirit holds you by your hand and leads you through this ways of this, this, this forest, this darkness, this dark jungle. He knows where the lion is coming. When the Leviathan is coming, he knows when the Leviathan is coming. When the marine spirit is coming, when the dragon is coming, he knows. And he has all power to relinquish this or distort, to erase it. The only thing that the only thing that he needs from you is your trust. Without your trust, he cannot show you the way. Without trust, he cannot lead you. He wants to lead you. in the world you were used to le uh, lead your own life. In the world, you always said, I am not letting anyone lead you. No, I live my life the way I want. My life belongs to me, my life. But in Jesus, does the Holy Spirit must lead you. Without the leadership of the Holy Spirit, you cannot get through. To be led in the Spirit, you must be baptized in the Spirit. Amen? We must be baptized in the Spirit so that we are able to know His voice, so that we are able to see His ways, so that we are able, hallelujah, to bring forth the fruit of Him. We need to be um, immersed into the Holy Spirit. 
times are in a way that without the Holy Spirit, without the fullness of the Spirit, without the leadership of the Spirit, without the guidance of the Spirit, we will not make it. I'm sorry to say it. I'm not here to tell you Jesus loves you, Jesus is love, Jesus is... You know all of this already, that Jesus loves you, but I must show you a way in which you can get safely out of this jungle. I must show you the way in which, in the end, you can walk hand by hand with Jesus and work in His ways and in His works, so that in the end you will have the crown of victory. This is the way I must show you, and it will cost you a lot. This way must cost you a lot. Devotion, um, denying yourself, trusting God. And in this way, I must tell you, you can lose everything. You can lose your money, you can lose your house, your car, you can lose everything. Yes. God can take away everything from you and you have nothing. You have children, wife, you don't know how to nourish them tomorrow. But every morning there is a bag of rice in front of the drawer. You don't know where it comes from. Is it possible with God? Yes. That at the end of the month your uh, account is negative and you don't know how to pay the rent. But you don't panic. The children come, Dad, the fridge is empty. God will take care. The wife comes and say, Hey, we don't have money for gas anymore. Darling, God will care for it. This is the God of the Bible. That, will, that can take away everything from you. That expects that your security is not in your car, your house, your career, but your security is in Him that you are ready not to mourn, uh, murmur because you don't have anything to eat not to murmur because sickness is in your house but that you praise God thank you that the sickness is here through the sickness you will show your glory Lord thank you that I lost my job and my career because you have something greater for me this is the spiritual language of the spiritual people but when you cling to everything no Start saying today, Lord, separate my heart from everything I have. Bind my heart with you. Because when the hard times come, you will overcome this hard time. You will not murmur. You will not complain. You will not be in sorrows. You will say, my deliverer lives. Because your trust is focused on him and built on him. Hallelujah. From here on, I will make a stop. And we will continue with this topic next week. It is a wonderful topic. And I will give us the examples of such uh, teachings that you count as demonic teachings. I give you some examples here. All teachings that tell you the gifts of the Spirit were in the times of the Apostles and it doesn't exist anymore. This is a demonic teaching. All teachings that say the fivefold ministry does not exist anymore. It was back then. This is a demonic teaching. All teachings that have to do with um, too much grace from Monday to Sunday, grace, 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 God is gracious, this is demonic teaching. The teaching that has to do with safe ones always safe, please throw it into the trash, it is demonic teaching. The teaching that tells you you don't have to do anything, everything is, has been done already, it is a demonic teaching. Yes, everything is fulfilled. But Jesus has fulfilled everything and given us the strength to fulfill everything in and through him. Hallelujah. Jesus has fulfilled everything so that we receive the power to fulfill everything in him, with him and through him. This is why Jesus came as a human. He came as a human to show us the ways of um, salvation. He came as a human to show us the ways of victory. He came as a human to show us the ways of breakthrough. He has done his part. Now we must do our part. In him, through him, and with him. I hope you understand, this is the grace. 
This is the grace. We have received the power with him, through him, Amen. and in him to fulfill everything. Just like Jesus overcame Satan, you must also overcome come Satan. Just like Jesus defeated Satan, you must also defeat him. Just like Jesus Christ was successful through Jesus, in Jesus, and with Jesus, you have all abilities that were not possible before the death of Jesus among the people. Today, you're allowed to say Satan. Um, by, um, I was blind, I was naive, I had so much lack of knowledge. You've played with me like you wanted. But from the day I read, I give you power against serpents and scorpions and treat on them. I give you the, the, the authority to destroy the works of Satan. From the day I read, the Son of God appeared to destroy the works of Satan and he has given me the same authority. Satan, this time is over. Because I am, uh, I have, I have been moved with Jesus to heavenly places, and just like you are placed at the footstool of Jesus, you're also on the footstool of my feet. Satan, I'm a son of the kingdom of God. I reign over the heavenly places, over the world. I reign over the sin, over your lies, over your seduction, over your manipulation, over your demon demons. I, my wife, my children, my house, we reign over Satan. When you pray, I give you a, a hint. Don't pray like this. No. Open your mouth. Open your mouth proclaim words to create the world God spoke to uh, put away evil situations from your life you must speak we are unsuccessful because we don't speak prophetic speaking remember life and death are in the power of the tongue in the power of the tongue I was in South France. Someone told me a woman has cancer. The mother of a former pastor got luckily put him back into his ministry. We went there and spoke to the cancer. The woman started coughing, coughing. Cancer out, cancer. You have nothing to do there anymore. From the feet until the head, the woman trembled. The woman trembled and things came out of her mouth. It came out of her mouth. It came out of her mouth. She started screaming. We didn't stop saying, you cancer, you have nothing to do in this body anymore. It didn't take two days. We uh, started visiting uh, a family. The man is 54 since he's 18 years old. Here, everything is gone. He had, has had cancer with 18. They have removed everything. He was under chemotherapy his whole life. The doctors didn't give him any hope. His blood uh, values were so terrible. We went there. He has, he has two daughters. I asked the 18 year old woman, Do you think Jesus is the Lord? She says, No. Do you want to have anything to do with Jesus? No, never in my life. She was embittered. Embittered to see since her birth. Her father was in such a state. He became lame. He's walking like, you must hold him. I looked at this man. I said, you're a preacher of the gospel. You're a teacher of the word. You're not allowed to sit in this state. Because the time comes where God will use you. This state is not an eternal state. This state will stop very, very soon. And we will see you also and receive you in Mannheim also. Next time I come here, you will not walk on with help anymore because this sickness has nothing to do in you anymore. The next morning, he had the greatest uh, investigation. I didn't know it. The doctors say the blood uh, values are normal. 
the doctors were surprised to see that his blood values and, and it can be that maybe he doesn't have any chemotherapy anymore the blood values became normal his father called me he was happy he said at 6 a.m he, he called me already hey 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 something wonderful happened i said what happened the blood values are normal have become normal I say honor to the Lord. Remember, God is not a human to lie and not a son of man to uh, regret. Everything he says, he will fulfill it. We don't serve a small God. The church and religion showed us a God that is not mighty. A God that only expects that we come and sit and sing some Larry Ferry songs and dance a little and, and have a little word and then we go drink coffee and a little cake until next Sunday. Always these rituals and routines. This time for rituals and routines is over in this nation. And we stand up as a church and we say enough is enough. We don't want to have any church that is without power. We don't want to have a church. We are not uh, showing off our God who is without power. Our God is a God of wonders and miracles. We're not. Um, we're not representing our God when we cannot heal people and change people. Your life must change people. Your movement must change people. Your language must change people. Your behavior must change people. Your family must change people. When someone sees you, mama, they must see Jesus in you. When someone sees you, mama, they must see Jesus through you. When someone sees you, they must see the movement of Jesus. This is the true church of God. Lift your voice and say, Lord, this time is over. I cannot serve without power anymore. I don't want to serve with the power any, without power anymore. No matter how old I am, God is able to use me. God is able to do signs and wonders through my life, no matter how old I am. Hallelujah. Father, start praying with your own words and say, Lord, hallelujah, here am I before you, before the throne of grace, Lord. Oh, Father, fill me, enable me. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, say the Lord, tell the Lord, I want to receive this power according to Acts 1 verse 8. Lord, I want to receive this power. I want to receive this power. Say, Lord, I'm not doubting. I believe in your power. I believe in your gifts. I believe in your ministry. Fill me, O Lord. 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 Me, o Lord. I want to be in power. Say, Lord, give me your power. Give me your power, Lord. Fill me with your power, Lord. Holy Spirit, take control in my life. Take over the movement in my life. Take over everything, Holy Spirit. My shaka baba baba yisika na ni shaka mama ma yisika la la baba baba yisika na ni shaka. Ni cha baba 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 yisu. Ni cha baba 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 yisu kari yisika mama ma yisika kari yisika na ni mama ma yisika la baba 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 yisu kari yisha. Oh cha baba baba pray pray dear sister pray pray the bible says open your mouth and i will fill it open your mouth i will fill it lord fill my mouth lord fill my mouth with your words lord fill my life with your presence lord fill your church lord your church needs your power your church needs your words your church needs you lord Oh, more fire in me. Oh, Lord, you're fire, Lord. 
your fire in your church, your fire in our midst, your fire, Lord. We want to be in fire. We want to be in fire. My Sakar Yeshu. Jesus. <laughs> Oh, pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Say, Lord, your power today. Oh, Lord, your power today. Oh, Lord, your power today. Oh, Lord, Say, Lord, the fullness, the fullness of the Lord, the fullness of the Lord, the fullness of the Lord. You are fire today. You are fire today. You are fire in my life, O Lord. Say, Lord, you're fire. I want to be in fire. I want to be in fire. I want to have you fire in your, my life, in my house. I want to see it in my house, in my family. Lord, you're fire, Lord. Lord, you're fire, Lord. Lord, you're fire over your church, Father. Oh, oh you're fire, Father. You're fire, oh Lord. You're fire, oh Lord. You will receive the speaking in tongues. You will receive the speaking in tongues. You will pray in power. Receive new languages. Receive new languages. Receive fiery languages. Receive war languages. Pa battle languages. Receive new languages. New languages, new languages in the name of Jesus. New languages in the name of Jesus. Fire languages in the name of Jesus. Receive, receive, receive. Um, receive uh, the warfare, warfare in languages. Oh, receive the speaking in tongues. Receive the spiritual gifts. Receive the fire in you. Fire! Fire! Heaven is open over your life. Fire over Germany. Fire over Germany. Fire over the church in Germany. Fire. Receive the fire of God. 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 The fire of God comes over his church. Father, 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 
Rise up over this nation. Rise up over your church, oh Lord. Rise up, Father. Rise up, Father. Rise up, Father. Come with your mighty power. Come with your mighty power, Father. Come and overcome us. Come, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Come in our lives, Lord. Come in our families, Lord. Our families need you. Our marriage needs you. Our children need you, Lord. Your church needs your presence. Your church needs your power. Your church needs your victory. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want that you lift up your hands and start prophesying about the church in this nation. Start declaring words about uh, over the church in Germany. Start declaring words over your family. Start declaring words words of healing, of breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And say, Lord, I want to see your power in my life. I want to see your power in my house, in my family, in the church. I want to see it all there in the name of Jesus. Lord, fill us with your power. Lord, fill us with your power. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Declare such words. Declare such words. Say every discouragement falls away. Every laziness falls away. Every uh, distraction falls away. Every demonic teaching falls away. Every works of Satan are being uh, cast out of the church in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, proclaim victory. Proclaim victory over your house. Proclaim victory over the church. Hallelujah. We want to see victorious ministries. Hallelujah, Father, thank you. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. During the, during the prayer like this, has someone felt something in, in his body or her body or felt just anything, but he realized he needs urgent prayer? Did anyone feel anything? Hmm? During the, the church service, yes, yes, during the church service today. Has someone felt something? Hallelujah. Raise your hand, we pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, everything that's moving in the life of my sister should get out. Every sickness must leave in the name of Jesus. Must leave now. Must leave now. Every evil, demonic movement must leave in the name of Jesus. Must leave in the name of Jesus. Satan has no rights in your life anymore, in your family anymore. Satan has no rights anymore. He shall leave your body and your soul now. He shall go away now. Every soul binding, every um, depression or other sickness of the soul, every workers of Satan must leave your life. Go, go, go. Leave now in the name of Jesus. Leave now in the name of Jesus. Get out of the body, spirit, and soul. Get out of the destiny. Get out of the family. Leave now. Leave now. Leave now. Leave now. now. Through the blood of the Lamb. Through the blood of the Lamb. Leave, 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 leave. Leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Because it is written, we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we proclaim victory and we proclaim breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We give an applause to God, amen. We give an applause to the Master. Hallelujah. Honor be to God. Honor be to God. Honor be to God. Amen. I thank you. Can sit down quickly. I thank you for your patience. Amen. I thank you also when you don't understand anything or it is too too hard or please 
Let us speak about it. When you have some comments, please don't hesitate. We are ready to hear everything. We're in a developing phase and God is working with us. Amen. We are planning a meeting here for three days of fasting and prayer here in the church. From the 31st of this month, we have already um, told it to you before I went to vacation, the 31st until the 3rd, Sunday the 3rd. We come at Thursday the 31st here in the evening. We start from 11 p.m until 4 or 5 a.m. the next morning. Uh, the women will sleep here and the men sleep in the next room. And 10 a.m. or 10.30, we start again with prayer and word and exchange until 1.30 uh, p.m. Then a little break and 5 p.m. we start again until 6 p.m. Make a, we'll have a little break and uh, 11 p.m. we start again until 4 the next morning and we sleep, make a break, take a break and then again. On Sunday morning, everyone prepares himself for the church service. We will have uh, we'll receive the French people here, we will receive the, our siblings from uh, Belgium here it will be an intense prayer time. You can join us. It's wonderful. Everyone is... It's, it's open for everyone. We want for three days to have an intensive time with one another. We'll bring more um, uh, air circulating machines here so that the air is better. Don't worry, but we want to enter before God together and say, Lord, we are ready. Your army is ready. Equip us. Fill us. It might be um, exhausting for three days, but I'm glad. I'm excited. When you can um, take a, vac a holiday on Friday for the Lord, it's wonderful. If you're not able, then you can come after work. But it would be wonderful that we start Thursday evening until Sunday morning. We will fast in the evening. We will maybe uh, eat a little soup and continue and continue. We say, Lord, the fire on the altar of God in this nation, it must be ignited. And no one will be able to extinguish this fire or stop this fire anymore. This is why we want to meet here in the presence of the Lord, for our families, for the church, for this nation. Amen. I wish you the blessing of God. Everyone who needs a conversation during the week, there are conversations here in church. Just um, get to know, uh, get in touch with me. You have my number, and then we plan some conversations here in church. At the end of the church service, I just lead short uh, conversations because many people come that just have questions, so I don't have any long conversations. But if anyone needs um, a soul caring conversation or deliverance, conversation when you need deliverance in your life come and let us speak about it and then we organize a soul caring and deliverance for you amen god will help us uh, the lord bless you mightily